Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're the farmers. That's right. We're blue. I wear, I you look blue. amazing in your blue sweater tonight. I by like the way. your blue. Well, thank you very much. Hey, if you will, go ahead and roll my sleeve up because we're about to get to work here. Alrighty. You only have to roll up one. Think all of all right. the time we save by you not having to roll my other sleeve That's up. That's wonderful. It's amazing. Uh -huh. We had somebody from California the other day ask us to do chicken and dumplings. And I thought, you have got to be kidding me. Here we are, a country kitchen, mm -hmm. and we have not shown. That's bad. And that's just mean, <laughs> holding off a Southern classic. That's right. And let me tell you what, I've spent time and effort and energy trying to get the perfect chicken and dumplings. You got it. And you know what? I used to make it for the girls years ago, and I kind of forgot how I did it. And, and I make squirrel and dumplings and all kinds mm -hmm. of wonderful. And it's a very simple recipe, but there's one thing you cannot skimp on. You know what that is? What's that? Fresh chicken. That's right. You gotta have a fresh chicken. Mm -hmm. You can't get store-bought chicken broth or you're gonna be disappointed. Right. Especially after you try it with a fresh chicken. Oh yeah. So tonight we're gonna make you, wow, top secret. It's so good. Chicken and dumplings. It's so really. good. We ate some the other night and it's mm -hmm. just, oh, it's wonderful. Now, there are many ways you can make your dumplings. We're gonna make them the way we like them. Dad and his Southern friends call them slickums. Slickums? Slickums. <laughs> now, mom likes them fluffy and dry in the middle. Mm -hmm. I like the slickums. And okay. we're going to show you how to kind of do one in between, too. All right, so the first thing we got to do is we're going to get about six cups of water. Okay, so we're going to get this chicken boiling. Now, a chicken about this size, four, four and a half pounds, going to do it for about 90 minutes. Okay. That's the magic number. Let's see where that takes the water level when we drop this cat in here. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put two more cups in here. Let's make that about eight cups. Now I wanna end up with eight cups. All right. Six to eight cups is where I wanna end up. That means you're gonna to have to add some water as we move along. So I'll fill it all the way up for you. If you will. So we know about right here when we look at it, we're saying it's about eight cups. It depends on the size of your chicken. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a couple things in there. I'm gonna put some salt. Something else I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little poultry seasoning in here. Yummy. I'm going to take some pepper. I'm really going to go heavy on the pepper. Yeah, I like pepper. you got to have pepper in your chicken and dumplings. Now, as far as other flavors, I'm going to take an onion, and I'm not going to cut it up a bunch, because those flavors will cook throughout here. Did we not just... We ate the whole pot. And it's been, it's been like a year since I made it. Yeah, and it's so delicious. Sometimes. So we get good. so involved in what we're doing, we skip over mm -hmm. the things that we make for us. That's right. We think, well, everybody knows how to make that. This, I promise you, is fantastic. And it's top secret, so yes, don't it tell is. anybody. So we're gonna crank that up, turn it on, get it boiling. Then we're gonna cut it back and keep it on a slow and steady boil for about 90 minutes. All right, Ms. Farmer, if you'll knock a hide off these carrots right here. Since we know we've got about an hour and a half, to burn, mm -hmm. we'll plan accordingly. So we're gonna boil these carrots to make the perfect side for chicken and dumplings. And healthy, we're eating carrots. That's the way we're eating. That's right. Do you like my shirt? I do like your shirt. It's a new shirt. It's not It's not the one everybody loves though. That's true, but I can't wear it on every show. That's true. I got complimented okay. on it like three yeah. times, yeah. three times. Now this particular shirt had a hole in it today. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it happened, a new shirt. Very Guess upset. who fixed it? That's right, don't look too close, because I'm not a seamstress. Right don't here. look, don't look. I don't look. know how it happened. <laughs> okay, back to the food. All right, I'm gonna tell you about my top secret. These are all top secret recipes. I can't believe I'm getting them out. Either. Green beans, you want the best green beans in the world? Should yes. I tell them? Tell them. All right, first of all, cover them with chicken stock. All right, that's the beginning. Pour out the juice you had with them, whether they're homemade or store-bought, pour out the juice. Then you gotta chop some onions. Okay. Now we're gonna use, now we're gonna use about a third of a decent size onion, yellow sweet onions. This is the best green bean in the world. And we have served these at so many events. Oh yeah. And every time we've served them, people absolutely, I, I mean, absolutely it. dig these. So we got onions, we got chicken stock, we have the green beans themselves, and now we're gonna have a little bit of bacon grease. Which yes. we always say, don't we? The good yes. bacon grease. Bacon grease. Now we're gonna put 
copious amounts of pepper in there. We're going to use an all-purpose seasoning. we use quite a bit of that. That's good. And if you want to give you a little more salty flavor, you won't even have to put any salt in here if you do this. If you want to use some chicken bouillon, mm -hmm. you're on your way to some pretty good beans right there. Now, something that some people do and some people don't. It's up to you. Some people like a little sweet mm -hmm. in their beans and some people don't. If you want a little sugar, it makes it really good. I think it's good. If you don't want any sugar, that's fine too. Now we're getting to a good boil here, Nikki. So I'm gonna turn that down just a hair. Okay. And then we're gonna cover that up. Yummy. You need to keep an eye out. If you walk out of the room, you don't want the, your chicken foam. That's right. Make Nobody a mess. Likes chicken foam I don't wanna mess stove. up my stove, that's right. So our carrots are boiling away. Now we're gonna turn those back. And remember, you want everything to time out accordingly. So we know we got an hour and a half here. Right. We got about an hour here. We're gonna let those slide on by. And we're gonna cook those green beans for at least an hour till those onions really get cooked down and all those flavors begin to marry up. This is a top secret meal here. Yes, it is. And this is long overdue. This just might be the perfect country kitchen meal. Yummy. I mean, yum papa, yeah. <laughs> as Sammy would say. That's right. So, Mrs. Farmer, the other day, mm -hmm. I said, because I'm so skinny, <laughs> I said I need to plump up a bit. You did. I need some good bread. Yes. And you said, hey, how about a quick bread, mm -hmm. which is a bread that no yeast. Right. Can you please make that for our friends out there tonight? Because that was absolutely it. delicious. I know. I ate about. I ate the whole thing. Now it's not. A, it's not a white bread per se. Right. Oh my gosh. There was something special about that. So if you will share that with our friends out there, so we can have it. This is a quick bread. When I was young, I remember buying those quick breads at the store, and you could get like a date bread, and all you did was add an egg and water or milk. Well, I thought I need to make my own homemade. And you like oatmeal. Oh. So I added oatmeal to this, so it's and it's pretty. It's an easy little throw together, and I had honey that I'm going to use. But the other night when I made yours, I used honey and syrup mix because I was out of honey, or you could use all syrup. But tonight we're going to use honey. Does that sound good? Honey for your honey. That's right. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right, and how we're going to start? I have a cup of milk, okay. and this is vitamin. A cup of what? Cup of milk, and it's vitamin D. You can have anything you want, but if you like skim, and then this is a half a cup of honey. Ooh, does this mean we're in the land of milk and honey? Yes, we are. Right here? No, the other day I did half and half, or you could do all syrup, but I'm going to do half a cup of honey. And our basic thing is just to get this melted into the milk. And if you'll get me a wooden spoon. One? Milk. You're you evil. milk. Okay, give me a spoon. Right. Milka. A wooden spoon? A wooden spoon's perfect, right. yes. And I also have three tablespoons of butter. So butter that's my base. It's beautiful. That's right. So we're going to get this all melted down, and then I'm going to set it aside and let's let it cool a little bit while we do our dry ingredients. All right, Ms. Farmer, what we got? All right, I got everything melted together, so I'm gonna put it in another pan because I wanna let this cool down a little bit because we're gonna put an egg in there. We don't want scrambled eggs. That's true. That's right. All right, now I'm gonna move all this stuff and we're gonna put our dry ingredients together. Gotcha. All right, let's put this chicken through some turn. exercises. Oh, that smells good. I know it does. Ooh, oh, yummy. Yeah. Now, I'm eyeballing this and I'm watching the level. Now, you can see it's dropped a little bit, so I'm gonna put a little bit more water in there because I want the end product to still have about eight cups in there so I'm gonna good idea come back with a little bit more water okay we have cleaned up some stuff and now you're ready with your dry ingredients I'm gonna put my dry ingredients together I have a cup and a half of flour here all right. I have this all-purpose flour all-purpose flour mm -hmm. I got a half a cup of sugar all more right. sugar this is actually three teaspoons of baking powder gotcha and I stole your salt away because I'm gonna need one teaspoon of salt gotcha that's my base I'll give you that back for Thank yours you later much. and now I have a third cup of oatmeal, and I added oatmeal to this because I know you love oatmeal. Oh, With like your oatmeal it. cookies, you got oatmeal issues. And I have three quarters of a cup of pecans, and I'm gonna chop these up so they can be mixed in the bread. Pecans. Pecans. Now this ended up being a, it looked almost like a wheat bread because of, of the All this. oatmeal and the uh, pecans. Yeah. Man, oh man, you talk about a perfect side. Mm -hmm. With a little sweetness to it. Super yum. Oh, it's just delicious <laughs> and it's quick. You don't have to let your dough rest. You don't right. have to let anything rise. You just pop it in a pan, put it in the oven, and let it cook. It is so good. All right. So Are we, we have... preheating? Yes, we are. I'm at 350 and we're going to let it's going to cook for 45 minutes. Gotcha. Your mixture has come to room temperature, which means we need to get this in the oven, don't we? Gotcha. All right. So, last ingredient one egg. I'm going to go ahead and put this in my main big bowl. Okay. And I'm going to whisk it up. 
All right, and now I'm gonna, this is room temperature. Gotcha. As long as it's not hot, because I'm gonna just add this to the egg, and I'll hand you that to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm gonna mix this up. And is that it, as far as the ingredients? That's it. Now pretty much what I'm gonna do is get the mixer and slowly add our flour to it. You need a hand or you got it? If you'd like to, that'd be great. Well, you wanna do nice it? Nice That's a nice two hands right Yeah, there. you can help me, that'd be nice. Beautiful. You know, for something that was so complex in flavor, that seems awful simple. Yes, it does. Now, it's really good. I've already greased this, and we're just going to put this into the pan. You smell it? it smells good. Even. I remember the smell. And we're just going to let this cook for 45 minutes while we're waiting for everything. Get it out, coat it with butter. Ooh, it's dog. It'll be a perfect side for this. That's right. Pop this in the oven. Ready? ready? Let's do it. And if you'll time 45 minutes for me. chicken and dumplings. Right. There's a lot of people make these different ways. Mm -hmm. There is no wrong way when you're cooking. Right. If you like them fat and fluffy, that's up to you. If you like them skinny and noodly, mm -hmm. which we do, yes. that's all good too. We're making that version. Mm -hmm. We will not come to your house and force you to eat those. That's right. Nikki might, I won't. Right. So anyhow, Sally, our friend, has three ingredient biscuit. Right. They're always perfect. Mm -hmm. We keep that in mind when we cook a lot of things. Right. This is the same thing. We're gonna show you, we're gonna put just a little bit, we'll make it four ingredients. Okay, and one of them. A baking powder in one of them, just to show you the difference. But this is beautiful. What other three ingredients, Ms. Farmer? And guess what, I get to use my lard. And look how much I've used already. We just... And here is a little bit of footage of us cooking down massive quantities of pasture-raised leaf lard from a pig which is good stuff. Yes, it is. All right, so I'm gonna need a tablespoon and a half in each of this. I have a half a cup of flour, because I've mm -hmm. divided it, because we're gonna try two different ways. And I always gotta use the lard. Now, if you were doing a huge batch, you would double this recipe. Oh, yeah. But for us, this is about all we're gonna need here. Now, I'm gonna do two separate. So we can do one with baking powder and one without. Buttermilk, Sally says always buttermilk. Absolutely. So I have a third with this half a cup of flour, and I have a tablespoon and a half of lard, third cup of buttermilk. And I'm, we made these a little bit ahead of time because I think it's when you put them in the fridge and let them sit. It does not hurt. It yeah. does not hurt at all. And it's easier to roll them out, I think. So we're going to go ahead and get that all nice. All right, before I get my hands all dirty, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of baking powder here. This is in the orange that's dish. That's right. We got about an, an eighth of a teaspoon here. Let's see if that's going to make a little bit of a difference. Let's see if it makes those a little bit bigger. Now, again, Dad and his friends, some of his southern friends, call these slickums. Slickums. I like them thin and really doughy, noodly, yeah. I guess yes. you could say. And again, some people like the thick, fluffy ones. You could do that too, but this tonight is the way I loved them as a kid. All right, so let's remember the orange bowl is the one with the baking powder in it. Absolutely. So we don't get it messed up. Now, when we drop this in and we combine everything together, these are only gonna go for about 10 or 11 minutes and they're done. So again, she's gonna pop them in the fridge and we'll come back to That's this. Pretty good. It's almost time for a short break. Yes, it is. What kind of snack can we have? <laughs> Do you need cookies? During, oh, I wish we had some. <laughs> you know what? Have we done cookies on the show? I don't Kelly, think have we done cookies on the show? Twice. Kelly says twice. So you know what that means? Time for some cookies. Need some cookies. Ooh, Mrs. Uh, Farmer, can you make me some cookies? I can make you cookies. <laughs> All right, bread's baking. Mm -hmm. 350, starting to rise, looking good. Carrots are about done. I've just turned them on low. The beans still cooking away because I want to let them go for about an hour and get those right. get those onions, those sweet yellow onions cooked down. Those go in the fridge. Baking powder? No baking powder. Orange. You got it? You're going to remember? I'll forget. Extra. So ah, you remember. You're in charge. <laughs> All right. Pop those in the fridge and we'll be right back. Give it like 10 minutes and then we'll pop it out and sit it. Let's get, what do you think? Oh, that's ooh. beautiful. I want some. Oh, it smells like heaven in here. You know, it really shook me up when we got that message the other day from that nice young lady who's from California mm -hmm. and said, I looked and there's no chicken and dumpling recipe. I thought, oh no, not a proper chicken and dumpling recipe. That's this right. is the real deal right here. This is amazing. And I said this earlier in the show, I'll say it again. 
there's really no shortcuts here. You gotta boil your chicken. You absolutely have to boil a fresh oh, chicken. Yeah. Because if you get the store-bought, I mean, you can make chicken and dumplings from store-bought broth, but no, you're not, not gonna like get, this. Not gonna get that flavor. All right, speaking of that, I'm gonna turn the chicken off. Okay. I'll take the top off and you, you can see it's coming away from the bone. That looks good. Okay, so let's get this bird out of here very carefully. He's draining. Oh, he's falling apart. Perfect. Now, I can tell our liquid has gone down, but that's gonna be enough to do what we've got to oh, do. Yeah. We're making a batch just for us, so that'll be fine. And we're still gonna have at least a quart and a half in there, maybe just a little bit more. Ideally, if you're making a bigger batch, you'd want about two quarts, but this is, this is gonna be fine. Let that set a minute. We're gonna start picking this when it cools down, but Mrs. Farmer, we have some dumplings to cut. Yes, we do. Now, which one's the one with the baking powder in the it? The orange. Let's get them out, All right. roll them out. All right, while you're doing that, I'm gonna take these carrots out and carefully cut them the proper size. Now, if you wanted to, you could use canned carrots, but we're doing everything fresh tonight. And we're gonna make sweet, to me, the perfect side. The perfect side for chicken and dumplings with some sweet carrots. And there's ways to sweeten them up. You can have them without anything. You can put a little butter on them. But we're gonna make an old family recipe that I discovered a few years ago. Couldn't get our granddaughter to eat her vegetables. That's right, didn't like carrots. Didn't like carrots. So we came up with a recipe called Karoots. <laughs> and she said, well, what is a Karoot? I said, well, here, just try it. Just try a tiny little bite. And amazingly enough, she liked Karoots. She did, and to this day, she likes Karoots. I think she finally knows what they are. What happens when you combine brown sugar, pure maple syrup, and butter? Why, well, it's gonna be really good, regardless of what you put in it. That is our Karoot recipe, and you'll see what it looks like here in a minute. It's a perfect side for this. I'm also going to strain the onions and the celery out. When that sets, for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, once it cools down a little bit, I'm going to strain some of that fat off the top mm -hmm. because I want this to be nice and pure and beautiful and wonderful. Now, we have our broth back on, and I'm going to put a little bit of heat under that. And I've got a low heat on my carrots. Oh, excuse me, my carrots. Carrots, that's right. I'm going to put me some butter in there. How to put half a stick to a stick. I'm gonna take some brown sugar, and I'm just putting equal parts. I'm not sure how much I'm putting in here. Say, let's say a tablespoon and a half a piece. I say it's a quarter cup, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the 100% uh -huh. pure maple syrup. What is the ingredient? The ingredient, you notice I said ingredient, uh -huh. to pure maple syrup, Mrs. Farmer? Maple syrup. Syrup. <laughs> It is sap. Oh, just sap. From okay. a tree. From a maple tree. Okay, that's true. That's all there is. And we, well, let's just show you some footage here. Here's some trees that we tapped, the maple tree. Mm -hmm. Here is the large amount of sap that we got from the tree. We did get a lot. Then you take this and you cook it down and you reduce it down and you reduce it down and you reduce it down. And so what you've got is 40 gallons of sap. And what's that get you, a quarter cup of syrup? <laughs> Equals a very small yes. amount of pure syrup, but you know what, it's worth it. You were very patient. I didn't have the patience. And I see why it's expensive in the store. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes. You go to the store and say, why am I paying yeah. so much for pure syrup? Because it's laborious. Is that a word? <laughs> That's a word. Laborious. <laughs> so we're cooking this down. Low temperature, I'll turn it up just a little bit. Our beans are done. They look good. When you start seeing the moisture cooked out of that and all those flavors, oh. And you see I took my bread out and set it there just to look pretty. Look at that beautiful bread. Make it look pretty for us. And what are you gonna call that again? That is my honey oatmeal pecan bread. Quick bread. Yeah, quick bread, yeah. This is the quintessential Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen perfect southern meal. Yes, it is. Is this not beautiful? It is beautiful. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead. You can help, help me, you. Mrs. Farmer. Get your hurts in there. Get everything in there. Now, if you've had any kind of candied sweet potatoes or anything like that, these are amazing. It'll put you in mind of that. And we're just gonna let those become acquainted in that beautiful karoot sauce. It's time to pick the chicken. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start grabbing. Let's see what we got here. It's cooled down enough to where I can start grabbing. I'm gonna take that over here. I'm gonna get rid of the skin. So here's how I'm gonna cut my chicken up. I'm gonna cut my chicken up 
And you notice I've got mostly white meat here. Now I prefer dark meat anytime with chicken, but for chicken and dumplings, I usually use the breast meat first. And I'm supposing we're probably gonna need about, I don't know exactly, but probably about a cup and a half, two cups of chicken here. Okay, while you're cutting dumplings, I'm gonna put some Tella cherry pepper in here. You can use as much of this as you want and it will not heat things up. It's more sweet. It's good in never. fact, it has a few citrusy notes in it. It's hard to explain if you've never tried it. All right, on this side, we're gonna put the ones without. This is the without, that's right. Let's see if you can see any noticeable difference. This is the way I like them right here, slickums. We're gonna drop those in here. I've got the temperature back up. Almost any chicken brothy recipe, chicken soup, chicken and noodles, chicken and dumplings. If you wanna put a little sweet dry basil in there, doesn't it really add something, Nikki? That sounds good, A little good, sweetness yes. and a little great flavor. Put a little on the top here. Now these are with, with the baking powder. Let's see what we get. So these I have found, I've timed them. Generally, if you keep these in the 10, 11, 12 minute range, you're doing just about right. Now I've noticed almost immediately these ones with the baking powder are popping to the top, Nikki. Really? Really? Isn't that something? Yeah, it is. Oh, look at these. Now look at the difference. Look at the difference here. Now see, that's the way I like them, almost like a noodle. And these over here have a little bit of puff. Do you want some more? Yep. I like them all. That makes me very happy. You know, you get your chicken and dumplings and, and there's a consistency that you look for. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple to make that and make it perfect. What you're gonna do is take some flour and water. Now we've got more part flour than we got water here. And I'm gonna turn this around, Miss Farmer, and you just roll that in. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm gonna mix that up. I'm gonna mix that in until we thicken up. Now our carrots are basking in their glory. The green beans are cooked down. They look good. All that moisture has cooked into them. Mm, mm, mm. So we're about ready to plate up here, Miss Farmer. We've got four more minutes. All right. Let's clean this mess up. We'll plate up, and we're gonna come back with some good eating. Yay. Look at that, Miss Warmer. Oh, wow. Look how that thickened up. See, see that consistency? Oh, it's so oh. good. You go first. All right, I'm gonna try carrot. And this is the slickums. That's what I mm. like. Look, look how doughy and ready that is. Oh, wow. Beans. Like to me, mm. and that might be too thin for some people. That's the perfect one for me. Well, that's a big noodle. Mm. Mm. Dumpling. That good. might be the perfect wow. meal, Mrs. Farmer. Mm. Now I gotta try a bite of your bread. I absolutely love your bread. It's got a little sweet, it's almost like dessert. I super buttered it. Super butter. Mmm. That good? Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Was that honey? I could eat that for breakfast. That's my breakfast. Oh. Now the ones with the bacon powder, they're just a little bit thicker. Mm hmm And that's fine too. I like the fact that they didn't get huge. So they're both good. I want a Delicious. little bit more. Oh, I'm sorry. That's good. I want to eat all that. I'm going <laughs> to eat all that in a minute. But first. There's people saying, oh my goodness, Mr. and Mrs. Farmer, where in the world would you get those recipes? And Mrs. Farmer, where would you go? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. And we're talking to people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. We had people the other day from all over the world, literally, asking where they were from, and they showed us. Yeah. How do you get on our Facebook page? Terribly complicated. What do it you is. do? It is. You hit like. You're kidding me. Like. It's really hard. So come be our friend. That's right. We'll talk cooking. We'll talk about the old days. We'll talk about the new days coming up. We'll talk about everything. But Mrs. Farmer, <sighs> if we don't eat, you gotta we'll perish. Eat. I know, I need to eat. So we'll wrap it up by saying it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Ooh, Kitchen. I wanna eat. But now I'm gonna eat. To order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com.